Close your eyes and watch the breath all the way in, all the way out. Let the breath be comfortable. Try to figure out what kind of breathing would feel best right now, long or short, fast or slow, heavy or light, deep or shallow. Experiment for a while to see what rhythm of breathing feels best, what texture of breathing feels best. And think of the breath as a whole body process. Your awareness can fill the body, the breath can fill the body. Trying to develop a sense of completeness right here. Our problem is that we always have this sense of lack. Something's missing, something's lacking. We go looking outside for it. That's because we haven't taken proper care of what we have inside. And John Lee gives the example of someone who has a good piece of land, but doesn't develop it, just lets it get weedy and overrun. And it goes trying to plant plants into other people's land. Of course there are going to be problems. Your plants in other people's lands, they're going to chase you away. You come back to your own land, though. You can plant as much as you like. Clean out the weeds, clean out all the stones and rocks. Till the soil. And then you can grow whatever you want. The mind can find that there are a lot of possibilities right here in the body in the present moment, if you pay attention. This is why the Buddha said that when you're exercising restraint, you try to keep the mind and all the other senses t tethered to the body. And you're trying to make the body as comfortable as you can, otherwise you're hungry to go out. The Buddha gave an analogy. He says, our cell, six different kinds of animals. There's a bird, there's a dog, there's a hyena, there's a snake, there's a crocodile, there's a monkey. If you tie them each to a leash and then tie the leashes together, then the animals will pull in their different directions. Of course, of those animals, the crocodile is the strongest. You drag everybody else down into the water, you know, everybody dies. But if you have a post, you tie the leashes to a post, and you put the post firmly in the ground, and then no matter how much the animals may pull and push, they can't go very far. So they end up lying down right there next to the post. So try to make the body as comfortable as you can. Because we do have to exercise restraint. The way we look at things, the way we listen to things, can either be good for us or bad for us. If it aggravates our greed, aversion, and delusion, it's going to be bad for us. So we have to learn how to restrain our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body by basically restraining the mind. Because it's the mind that gives rise to the greed that goes out looking to begin with, and then that greed gets aggravated by the way you look. You have to learn how to look at things in such a way that, that we don't give rise to greed, aversion, and delusion. In other words, you want your discernment to do the looking and the listening. And that requires that you exercise control, both over what you look at outside and that's going to come in, and then also what comes out of you in terms of what you do and say and think. When there's a control like this, there's going to be some resistance. So to overcome that resistance, you try to make the body as comfortable as you can right here, right now. That way it feels good to be here. This is your home. This is your land. This is what belongs to you. And if you learn how to take good care of this, then you won't go hungering after things in other people's land. If everybody exercised restraint in this way, the world would be a very peaceful place. But we can't wait for other people to exercise restraint before we do. We have to start with ourselves. Because if our goodness depends on other people's goodness, it's not very solid, it's not very reliable. You want to have a source of goodness inside. And so it depends on learning how to notice the potentials in your body, the potentials in your mind, and learning how to make the best use of them. Starting with something simple like the breath. It doesn't require a lot of reading up on what the Buddha had to teach, but it does require that you stick with it and are observant and use your ingenuity to make this a good place to be.